I'm Edward Neiman. In this video, I'm going to introduce the Amethyst Variations, a really great piano piece by Joel Hoffman that I recently uploaded on YouTube. Hoffman wrote this piece only a couple years ago, in 2012, and I discovered it through my teacher here in Cincinnati, James Toko, who gave it its first performance. The week before that performance, he brought the score of Amethyst Variations to my lesson. He was very excited by it and was showing me all the musical processes, the finely crafted detail behind the surface of this composition. As trained musicians, we've spent our musical lives studying scores like an alchemist would study his vials of chemical blends, searching for why certain mixes of substances or sounds have the effect that they do. The piece is built on a simple 12-bar melody that sounds as if it could be a folk tune. It's like a blank canvas in that it's hard to tell what the song would be about without the words, whether it's about love or death or something in between. But the simplicity, the artlessness of the melody makes us think of a folk setting. In the main theme, Hoffman writes a single unbroken pedal under the melody which gives it a hazy quality like this. almost as if it's being recollected. He also breaks the melody into seven asymmetrical pieces with pauses in between so that the 12 bar melody becomes more than three times as long, 39 measures including the pauses. That also gives the melody a reflective quality, as if you're humming it in your mind and you break every few measures as your mind wanders or you think back to what just came before. This melody with pauses in between is the theme for this set of variations. And Hoffman puts it actually in the middle of the piece with four variations on each side. One of the really great things about this piece is how the variations always do what you don't expect. For example, we expect that the theme would become more elaborate, uh, that you hear more notes as we do in this set of Mozart variations. What Hoffman does is actually the opposite. He takes notes out so that the theme becomes more sparse in the variations. For example, at the beginning of the piece, the melody is barely an outline of the original theme. Instead of this, we only hear this. Another clever twist is that what really changes from variation to variation is not so much the theme itself, but these pianistic textures that are overlaid on top of the theme. This changes our perspective of the theme itself. So while the melody stays pretty much the same, we hear it differently depending on what else is going on at the same time. For example, even though the melody is always exactly the same tempo, it sounds faster with a slower accompaniment and slower next to rapid figurations. Remember that the melody was broken up by long pauses. In the theme, those pauses are like moments of contemplation but changing the accompaniment during those pauses can totally change the mood. Uh, the pauses can be like a commentary on the melody. Or in the more dramatic variations, the pauses can be violently separated from the theme.
So a large part of these variations is about how changes in the background texture affect how we perceive the melody. As you listen uh, to one variation moving into the next, you'll hear quite pronounced changes in color, in dynamic, and in pedaling as well. But there are also subtle but methodical changes within each variation, almost imperceptible from moment to moment, uh, even though the end of the variation has already moved a long way from the beginning. It's like a camera slowly panning through a scene, or an amethyst color bending and refocusing into a deep blue. The fourth variation begins with a pattern of 30 notes played rapidly in staccato, like points of light refracting through an amethyst crystal. The pattern is long and seemingly random, scattered sounds without any clear direction. But then, as the pattern repeats, it becomes one note shorter each time. By the time the pattern has shrunk to 12 notes, it seems much more regular and focused, and then it telescopes down to four notes, three notes, two notes, one note, like a story expands as before us, and we gradually hone our senses onto a single point of light. Amethyst Variations is an incredibly elegant and well-controlled piece, a really striking and creative take on what variation form can be. But ultimately, these details that I've been going through are not what the piece is about, what make it so compelling to listen to. So what is this piece about? Well, it's about color. Amethyst is a color, a bright purple, and it's also a gemstone. If the theme is like a gemstone, the textures on top of the theme bring out different hues by changing the angle of the light, or they bring out the irregularities in the shape. It's also about memory. It's about a faded melody with a forgotten meaning that comes back to us in pieces, in fragments colored by the passage of time. Just as some melody notes drop out in the variations, Parts of our past drop away as we forget them, and we paint over them with new memories that irretrievably bend our understanding of where we came from. For me, that's where the emotional quality of Amethyst Variations comes from. It's a little sad when we lose a part of who we were, but at the same time, it's also comforting that our past is always with us in ways that we need it to be, and that it can be reshaped as we change and as it changes us.